And there we go, guys. It's about time. Van Halen. Back in 2004. Man, it's hard to believe that was 20 years ago. It just seems like yesterday, if you ask me. We need to see if Sammy makes any sort of statements because he loves going on the interview circuit. See if he says why it is that, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jason Bonham is out and Kenny Arnoff's in. And we got a rumble rant from Mr. Robert Spawn here. Thank you so much there, brother. Five dollars. We salute you, my friend. He says, you know how much I enjoy Rock Talk. Appreciate you letting me know when you go live. Always a great show. Yeah, and I almost forgot today. You know, when I started playing my music videos, I was like, oh, no, I'm supposed to text my buddy, uh, Mr. Robert Spawn, and let him know that, you know, we're going live. Thank you so much there for the Fiverr, buddy. We greatly appreciate that. Greatly appreciate that. Maybe we'll start becoming close to cashing out during the Hanukkah season. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that'll be great. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> it's it, it's kind of a slow operation with Rumble, but I'll tell you, it's much more fulfilling because we're able to do a whole lot more for you guys than we were ever able to do on YouTube, like play music videos and to um, to be, you know, uh, open and honest with you guys about everything as opposed to having to dance around our language and all that stuff. So, man, even though we're making much less than we ever did on YouTube over here on Rumble, I enjoy being over here on Rumble a whole lot more. Thank God I'm not one of these guys that has to go and make their living on the internet. <laughs> you know, thank goodness, because I get to do this for fun. And then I get to uh, feed my guitar addiction a little bit. <laughs> Speaking of my guitar addiction, some of you guys may not know, I was in several bands when I was younger, and one of which was a Christian metal band known as Echelon. And these guys, it's funny because everybody that was in this band was probably like five years younger than me. And there was kind of this generational thing. I was like, you know, Petra, Striper, you know, that type of stuff of the Christian rock, the 80s inspired stuff. These guys were into GS Megaphone, Cutlass, that kind of stuff. So I had to learn to sing and play like that. And I was in this band called Echelon. That was more their style. Now, my style would come out whenever we do a cover of Knocking on Heaven's Door at our gigs. You know, they, they were like, why are you singing it so high? And I was like, that's the way it's done right there, man. That's that's how you do it. There's no way in hell that I'd be able to go and hit those notes now. No way in the world. But one of the gigs that we ended up getting was our drummer knew somebody who was working at the Cornerstone Festival. And we were kind of like on this, basically a reserve at the Cornerstone Festival. And this reserve was like, okay, if one of these bands doesn't show up, we have to adjust our schedule. And we're putting you guys all the way at the start. Okay, you guys are at the beginning. And so basically what ended up happening is we got the call up to be the first band playing the Cornerstone Festival. At that time, there was like 20 people there. This is a huge festival, you know, and the, the guys that we loved and, uh, you know, uh, going to see were, were playing the festival, such as Disciple was there, you know, and I think that they were even headlining it that year, if I remember correctly. It's, it's so funny going and seeing those guys play these very small venues to headlining the Cornerstone Festival. You know, it was just <coughs> crazy. And there was this new band as well that was going on a couple of bands after us. And it was this band called As I Lay Dying. Okay? Now, I'm giving you the context of this because it will play into the story that we have coming up here of what is going on right now with As I Lay Dying, because I think I have a little bit of insight into this. Another Tim Lembesis bandmates exits his other band. The departures aren't done for Tim Lembesis. 
as now the first member of his side band, Australian Death Machine, has decided to exit the group. Drummer Brandon Short confirmed his departure from the band over the weekend following the heels of all four members of As I Lay Dying exiting that band and leaving Lambesis as the sole member of the group. Why did Brandon Short leave Australian Death Machine? Short issued a lengthier post on Instagram concerning his exit from the band, but echoed some of the same sentiments that were shared by fleeting members of As I Lay Dying. In the post, it is with a heavy heart that I announced my decision to step a, a step away from the Australian Death Machine for the sake of my mental well-being and personal beliefs and in the light of recent developments surrounding As the As I Lay Dying camp and Tim has become an inevitable step for me. Elsewhere, he stated, my integrity and my character have been called into question in a way I can no longer accept, especially with what has come to light in utter disbelief. He also added, the repeated promises, the endless cycle of I'll do better, words that once gave me hope, have turned into a broken record and has brought no real change instead. I found myself trapped in a pattern that eroded my trust and well-being. The cycle has reached into my personal life, affecting my mental health in ways I can no longer ignore. Okay. This is how my story plays into this. Okay. One of the things with the Cornerstone Festival is a lot of the bands over there, it doesn't matter if you are high up on the bill or very low on the bill. When you're backstage and the other bands are going and, you know, finding out where they have to go and all that stuff. And they're, some of them have dressing rooms. Some of them don't, you know, everybody is kind of in the same, you know, everybody's on the same level over there. You know, it's not like, Whoa, wait a minute here. This is cutlass or this is disciple. Who are you guys? You know, we were hanging out with the people from Flyleaf. We were hanging out with the people from um, Disciple and uh, Cutlass and GS Megaphone and all of those guys. You know, we were, you know, going and just hanging out as, you know, we were all equals over there. This guy, Tim Limbesis. Now, this is when they were first starting out. As I lay dying, I don't think, I think they were getting ready to have their first major label record come out at this time. Nobody knew who they were. Nobody knew who, who, who we were as Echelon. The most that we had was a four song demo. That's all that we had. And one of the songs I didn't even sing on. Um, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But so we, we went in there. We knew our place. We knew our place. We knew that we weren't, uh, you know, the big, the big game, you know, we weren't the big show. We weren't any of those things. We knew our place and we were, but this guy, I still remember when, as I lay dying came in the doors and this is so crazy that I still remember this, the doors, they had those big doors that you guys remember from your old, uh, high school gyms. They probably don't even use them anymore. The metal doors. That, you know, if you open them really fast, they'll go and slam against the, the wall. They have to have those guards up and all that stuff. And they could be rather loud. Well, they come busting in that way. Tim Lambesis right there at the front. Right there at the front, ahead of his bandmates. And it was almost like this orchestrated thing. There was like, I have arrived. And it was, it was interesting because I was sitting over there going and talking to Brad Noah from Disciple. And him and I were having a conversation. I don't even remember what the conversation was, but I remember we both about jumped out of our skin hearing those doors come wide open like that. And this guy comes in, Tim Lambesis, as though he was the headliner of the Cornerstone Festival. He comes walking in. He had an assistant with him. None of these guys had assistants. None of them. And he said, go and find me my dressing room. Well, dude, you load down on the bill. You don't get a dressing room. None of us get dressing rooms. 
It's only the guys that are like the, the, the top three bands over there have dressing rooms and they have to switch those out and all that stuff. And this sent him into a major rage. I thought he was going to flip over the table where he had all like the cheeses and the meats and the drinks and all that stuff. No, he, luckily, he didn't do that, but a chair went flying and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh my, wh who is this guy? We didn't know as I lay dying. They haven't had a major release yet. Nobody knew who this guy And we're sitting up there going, who is this dude that thinks that he deserves this? And we're sitting over there joking around at the time. It kind of acts like he's on steroids. Well, come to find out he was on steroids. <laughs> we find that out much later whenever he tried to have his wife killed. And yeah, the, the whole thing was just, it, it, it was a freaking nightmare. He was ordering people around. He was ordering the other bands around. Going out there to the stage and wanting to go and tell the crew what to, it's like, dude, you're not even getting, you're not even getting lights. Okay. You're playing at three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. You're, you're not, you're, you're not getting the, uh, the, the screen. You're not getting the, uh, the lights. You're not getting the fireworks, any of that stuff. But he thought he was getting all of that because, you know, the Cornerstone Festival is a huge production. The thing I could tell you is that if this is the way that he was when he was starting out, I can just imagine how much worse he is now in 2024 after, as I lay dying, has had a great deal of success. After all the things that he has brought upon himself, his prison sentence, his drug usage, and just everything else that goes along with that reputation. This is a guy that when he came back out, when he got out of jail, the thing that he did was he kind of came back with a splash. It's like everybody forgot that he tried to hire somebody to kill his wife. It's like everybody had forgot that. They're just happy. That one of their favorite metal bands, As I Lay Dying, is back. That's how a majority of the rock magazines like Blabbermouth, like Metal Injection, that's how it is that they frame this. As I Lay Dying is back. Not holding him accountable to the things that it is that he did. So when you look at the psychological element of this, that ego is amplified even more at this point. That ego has grown even more. And I guarantee you, what is going on here are the issues with Tim Lambesis thinking that he is more important to the overall genre of, what is it, metalcore or whatever the hell it's called. He thinks that he is James Hetfield. He thinks that he is um, Dave Mustaine. He thinks that he is a Lemmy. He thinks he is one of these guys. He's not. He's not. That band has a loyal fan base. But the thing is, it's not that big of a loyal fan base. You are not going to see them going to the top of the rock charts in Billboard. You're not going to find that happening. They have been dropped by several different labels. That goes and tells you right there where it is that this band stands. In fact, some of the side projects by the original members of As I Lay Dying had done better in the long term, especially for their mental health for that for that matter, after as I lay dying. Now there's something else that is going on here that is not being spoken about. And I really get the feeling that if it's not the 
the uh, the roids again. If it's not that, I think there's probably some other substance abuse issues that are going on with Tim Lambesis. This is a guy that pretty much dodged a bullet. He should have gone away for a lot longer than he did. If he tries to do what he does again, let me tell you something. I don't know if he will. I don't know if he won't, but I'll, I'll tell you. I don't think that people are going to fall for it this time. I think this is a guy that has damaged his reputation with the people that matter. The people that are able to take him on tour. The people that are able to make the records with him. His bands. He has damaged those relationships so much that I'm telling you, it's almost like that he is turning into a Vinnie Vincent. It really seems he's turning into a Vinnie Vincent or a David Lee Roth kind of character. When you have people jumping ship like this, I'm reminded of so many bands that this has happened to. The constant issues with Journey and Neil Sean. The constant issues with David Lee Roth, with every band member he has ever had. You notice that he always had a different band whenever he would go back out there on tour. The problem wasn't everybody else. The problem was Dave. And people are jumping ship right now from Tim Lambesis, As I Lay Dying, and his side projects at a much faster rate than somebody who is totally and utterly neurotic like a diamond David Lee Roth.